Centaur, your kind of company. Tonight on CTV3 News. Associations claim the SICB is blocking members of the BSCFA to move away from the association and join the Progressive Sugarcane Producers Association and the Corozal Sugarcane Producers Association. Two MOUs signed between Belize and Mexico. And the September celebrations take place under heavy security countrywide. These are some of the stories we have for you tonight in our newscast for Monday, September 12th, 2022. Speed. Everyone wants more. Internet is more than speed. That's why Centaur's Internet Express offers you wall-to-wall -wall coverage with its Wi-Fi extender. Just plug and surf. Stay connected as you move around your home with Centaur's Wi-Fi extender. Can your internet do that? Centaur, your kind of company. Ever since I was a kid, I dreamt of going to Mars. You can keep my dream alive. Come with me. You cannot, under any circumstances, leave my room, okay? Only for 35 days. Enjoy your favorite HBO original series and movies with Centaur, your kind of company. crédito dura más con Smart. Durante estos tiempos, todos buscamos cómo minimizar nuestros gastos y ahorrar a lo máximo. Con Smart, lograr esto es fácil. Es un hecho que con Smart, su crédito dura más. Puede llamar de Smart a Smart y de Smart a Digital sin discriminar al proveedor, usando su crédito promocional. Mientras que con el otro proveedor, solo puede usar su crédito promocional para llamar a Digital. ¿Qué significa esto? Su crédito promocional, ya que viene gratis al hacer sus recargas en temporadas de Double Ops, le otorga llamadas gratis a cualquier número nacional. Sigue con Smart y ahorra más dólares. I met Alex on the plane. When I woke up in the morning, he was so alive. I think they know you're lying. Enjoy your favorite HBO original series and movies with Centaur, your kind of company. Get her off that stage. From the Enjoy your favorite HBO original series and movies with Centaur, your kind of company. I never met did they expect that from you? Oh, my <laughs> God. Well defended again by Beverly. Oh, 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 o
look like Kobe hitting him real hard. My gosh, Melody. Now you the top. You see why me? The married life. She can't even enjoy her friends like in a piece. Mind your business. Someday you might find a great guy too. Exactly. Well, I still kind of have a crush party here because only. Oh no, my mother one want me dance with at the wedding. Oh yes. Yeah. Yes. Y'all, well, I would have go fall up down with you any day. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, when we're done passing up, trouble for one night. Make a walk on the house. Alright. And now I believe I have to get out of place at 5 o'clock tomorrow. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Hey, morning. Morning. Your friend Banana bring this for you on the way to work? Check it. Check it. You have to be more appreciative. You got some nice friend. And remember. Nothing never happened last night, right? Right? <laughs> I love you, Jack. You have to do this for you. There's nothing to fear but fear itself. Your future self will thank you. Hello. I need help. During the COVID-19 pandemic, women and girls were at the highest risk of suffering domestic violence. Domestic violence involves violence between any member of the same household. It can happen to females or males, young or old. However, the evidence has shown that women and girls face the greatest risk. That risk has heightened due to the impacts of the pandemic, including job losses, mounting stress, and restrictions to movement and recreation. We can all help to combat violence against women and girls during the COVID-19 pandemic. Just like Melanie did, you can reach out to someone who is struggling and help them to find a way out. It is never easy, but together we can fight this. Belize will not be safe until its women are safe. Secure Belize. With your news, also Samuel Carson, Fiesta FM 106.7. I am Joanna Rodriguez. On September 7th, a joint letter by two cane farmer associations, including the Progressive Sugar Cane Producers Association and the Carousel Sugar Cane Producers Association, was issued to Chairman of the Sugar Industry Control Board, SICB, Marcos Osorio, with the title. Cane Farmers' Freedom of Association. The strongly worded letter claims that there are cane farmers who have expressed their desire to transfer from the BSCFA to another association and are reporting that they are being unjustifiably obstructed in their efforts by their association and also by the SICB and SEPC. The letter states, and we quote, 
The SICB SEPC has taken the misguided legal position that it will not consider any application after the 31st of August 2022. Neither will it consider applications for extension of time to transfer, which, as you well know, was routinely done in the past, end quote. Today we spoke to SICB Chairman Marcus Osorio about this letter which he says stems from a request made by the representative of the association during a meeting of the SICB earlier this month to have the period for transfer to be extended from August 31st to September 15th. When my first reaction to that well after reading the letter which it's a very um, threatening letter to start with. It's a very threatening letter. Um, and also, I can read from the letter that the, the, the two persons that signed the letter are simply that, signing. I, 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 can, I want to believe they, that they are not even fully aware of the contents of the letter. They only signed. I can very well read between the lines who wrote the letter, but I will leave that for them. In the Progressive Association by law, in Section 5.05, where it states applications for membership by non king farmers and by transferees are processed as follows, and it says in, in 5.05e, it speaks about time frame and deadline. The applications and, and the debt and it goes by saying like this, and I quote, applications must, and as they use the word must, applications must be submitted by the 1st of June and no later than end of August of any year. Then, um, so I read that section to the member, which to me, simply the board or the member making the presentation was not aware of what his bylaw has, which is their governing, um, their governing um, uh, book. So, in the first instance, when and, and the, the accusations they make in the letter, which I know is not them, but somebody else on their behalf, uh, they accuse that that it is unlawful for the SCPC and the SICP to prevent farmers from transferring. The SCPC nor the SICP has nothing to do in relation to farmers resigning from one association and applying for membership into another association. That, that should be, and this is important to say, um, Norma, that should be a purely voluntary matter of Farmer. Contrary to the claims made in the letter by the two associations, Osorio says the SICB and SCPC have no role to play in the process of farmers deciding to change from one association to the next. Applications can continue throughout the year. And then I went ahead and read the section of the Sugar Act. And that is section 20, where it makes reference to transferability of cane farmers registration. And on section 22, it reads as follows. Application to the SCPC for transfer of registration will be accepted throughout the year, save and accept that, that if, an, if an application for transfer is received after the end of August in any year, it will not be considered for transfer of registration for the upcoming crop year, but will be considered for transfer for the subsequent crop year. So applications for transfer run the entire year, um, Norma. The exception is that for those transfers to be applied um, and granted, those applications will run up to the end of August of any year to be considered for the upcoming crop. So when when the two associations are accusing are accusing me or their letter addressed to myself 
and, and, and again, the letter that they signed, I am sure they did not write that letter. So, uh, I believe they need to review their, their bylaw first. If there is any unlawfulness, the unlawfulness is derived from the bylaw that governs the, their association, the progressive association. Um, and, and I invite them to consider to amend it in their upcoming general meeting if they so wish or they may decide to hold a general meeting because and, and maybe that those are the things that need to be questioned by their own members. If 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 members would be given the privilege to attend and participate in a general meeting of their association where matters of their association be addressed of which this would be one, this matter of transfers. Um, so I think in terms of of their letter, um, I may want to answer to them by telling them that the SICB nor the SPC has no ulterior motive, no ulterior motive in preventing or, or jeopardizing or putting obstacles, obstacles to farmers for them not to be able to transport from one association to another. We have nothing to do in that regard. That's the allegations made in the letter according to Osorio are being taken very seriously since they are both baseless and can be considered threatening. Less to be, and I hope that it is a voluntary matter of those farmers that support. And they, they go as far as accusing the BSDFC. And, I, and to me this is, this is serious because they accuse the BSDFC of interfering with this in, in the process of farmers wanting to resign from the BNPC. Um I think I think they they need to be careful in how they make reference and in terms of sustaining their accusation. If uh, uh, for example they are accusing BNPC of interfering, I don't know that and I'm not interested in knowing that. So when it comes to nothingness or or, or Stepping into the um, constitutional right of a person or um, is there by law that that is stepping on on lawfully into the right of, of their own farmers to to um, transfer when they have deadlines established in their bylaw. So I would I would really want to um, encourage the management of progressive in farmers' association to really read and most importantly that we to understand their bylaws because if if they don't understand their bylaw or what they have in their bylaw, then how can they expect their own farmers to move if they as the leaders don't know what they have in their bylaw? While he is yet to issue an official response to the letter by the SCPA and PSCPA, Osorio says he is seeking legal advice on the matter. I will. Um, I am still analyzing the letter and will decide if I will respond to them. Very likely, I will. Um, most, most importantly, because in the closing of their letter, they, um, they. And, and I will read the closing of their letter. This is therefore, and I quote, this is therefore to put you on notice that any further attempt to unlawfully interfere with any farmer's freedom of association to transfer to another association will be vigorously challenged in court. I believe they would, for that to happen, they need to have other evidence, especially where they say, that any further attempt to unnaturally interfere. They will have to be very prepared <clears throat> to, to bring about the evidence of that. Um, so um, I believe more because of that, I will answer them. I will answer their letter officially. Um, and while at the same time, uh, we are awaiting uh, legal advice on the matter. Before, before I respond to them. But um, 
it, it is not it is in no way surprising and normal. Um, and I think in recent months we have we have we have learned and now know that any single thing in this time and age within our sugar industry um, is challenge is about attorneys, is about lawyers, is about the court. So in no way is it surprising. And I want to also say that in no way it scares me. Alrighty, um, Mr. Marcos, thank you very much for... Our news team has reached out to representatives from the two associations for comment on the matter. However, we have not yet gotten a response to our request. The coffin carrying Queen Elizabeth II on her final journey on Sunday arrived in the Scottish capital, Edinburgh, now the focus of national mourning, after a six-hour procession from Balmoral Castle, the country, es the country estate where she died. A huge crowd lined the central Edinburgh's Royal Mile to catch a glimpse of the hearse as it made its way slowly to its first destination, the Palace of Holyrood House, the royal residence in the Scottish capital, where the Queen's coffin will remain overnight. There, after a religious service, the Queen's coffin will rest to allow people to pay their respects. On Tuesday, it will be flown to London, where there will be more opportunities for Britons to bid farewell to their monarch before her funeral. And meanwhile, that occurs in Edinburgh. Here in Belize, we remain in mourning. At the same time, government is dealing with changes brought along by the death of our country's head of state. For one, with the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, Belize's Magistrate Supreme and Court of Appeal have been ordered to begin switching over to the name of Belize's new Head of State, King Charles III. As previously mentioned per a notice from the recently appointed Chief Justice Louise Bellman, all court proceedings usually issued in the name of the Queen Regina must now be issued in the name of the King Rex and oaths and court documents referring to the queen are to be amended to refer to the king. Another change that could be coming is that within the constitution where the term Her Majesty appears at least 12 times. When it comes to the Belize Police Department, there will also be a few changes, especially when dealing with the riots proclamation. I would like to take the opportunity on behalf of the police department to explain express our sincere condolences to the royal family. And with the passing of the queen and uh, the incarnation of the new king, certainly when it comes to riot and uh, as is provided for in the criminal code, the riot proclamation where it would normally say God save the queen. Yes, in that respect, we, we, we no longer will say God save the queen, it's God save the king. Um, but in terms of our day-to-day -day activity, there is no way the change of the monarch in, the, um, in London is going to change how we operate as a department. Our um, guiding instructions and policies are given by the executive, the prime minister, and the cabinet, um, and not per se the head of state in terms of the queen or by virtue of the queen representative in Belize, the governor general. No, we are governed more by that of the um, executive arm of government, which is the prime minister and his cabinet. And let me not, I, I don't want people to say the commissioner don't understand what the executive, because the, the GG is a part of the executive as well. And that's why I make it clear, the um, cabinet led by the prime minister. On September 8th, two memorandums were signed by Belize and Mexico. The first was signed between the Corozal Free Zone and the Chitamal Industrial Park to facilitate collaboration between the two investment schemes and to collaborate on attracting investment and markets. The second memorandum formalized the commitment between the Ministry of Finance, Economic Development and Investment of Belize and the Secretary of Economic Development of the State of Quintana Roo to establish a formal framework for interorganizational technical cooperation and coordination, which will facilitate the implementation of activities to generate opportunities for investment and business, jointly develop regional investment programs and policies, 
promote investment opportunities through trade fairs, meetings, and exhibitions, promote cooperation in training and education for greater capacity building between institutions. These MOUs, according to Prime Minister John Bresenia, will open the door for more meaningful business collaboration between the private sectors of both parties, facilitating easier information sharing and providing greater business opportunities within a short time. Where we are going to find ways on how we can improve commerce between the two countries. We believe that um, by setting up this installation here, connecting it to the free zone in, um, in Corozal, that we can use that avenue to create, um, to be able to connect to the CARICOM market. Uh, Belize is a member of, of CARICOM, and that's why then we can use Mexican um, products or materials and to finish the processing in Belize and then have access into the CARICOM market. It's a great opportunity for, for, for both countries, for both Quintana Roo and for and for Belize and I am um, and I want to urge Belizean business um, people to take advantage of this to come here take a look at what's happening and see how they can um, take advantage of this great opportunity that is being made available to us through this um, uh, memorandum of understanding. Can you tell us? These opportunities will range from tourism and cultural exchange to agro industry education, custom services, and many more important business-related activities that closely link Belize and Quintana Roo. Well, what Belize is doing, and this agreement is basically opening up markets for Mexican products into the Caribbean, and could actually use Belize to get into Central America. Uh, Belize is the only country that connects both Central America and the, and the Caribbean. Um, and we need to take advantage of that. We've been talking about this for so long, but we have never really taken advantage of it. And this time, again, the work with um, CEO Garcia and her team, what they've been doing, they've been pushing to see how we could participate and take advantage of those opportunities. As I mentioned in my, my speech this, this, um, a short while ago, that we can then um, take materials from Mexico, bring it into Belize, convert it into a product, and then can export into, into the um, Caribbean um, duty-free. We are also expanding the partial scope agreement that we have with Guatemala. The same thing we can do. We can take products from here, um, the materials, finish the production in Belize, and then export into, into Guatemala. We mentioned the issue, for instance, of lime, that when there's a shortage in Belize, we can bring the products from, from uh, Quintana Roo introduce it in the Belize and mix it with our product and to continue the production of what we do. So the, the, the opportunities are limitless. Now it's left up to us as Belizeans to take advantage of those opportunities that are being made available to us by the signing of these two agreements. Honorary witnesses were the Prime Minister of Belize, Honorable John Bresenio, and Governor Carlos Manuel Joaquin Gonzalez of the state of Quintana Roo. This historic signing is business focused and will pave the way for collaboration well into the future. Prime Minister Bresenio was joined by Honorable Jose Abelardo Mai, Minister of Agriculture, Food Security and Enterprise, Honorable Christopher Coy, Minister of State in the Ministry of Finance, Economic Development and Investment, Ambassador Stuart Leslie, Cabinet Secretary, Narda Garcia, CEO in the office of the Prime Minister and for Finance and Investment, Mr. Servo Lobaiza, CEO for Agriculture, Food Security and Enterprise. His Excellency Oscar Arnold, Belize's Ambassador to Mexico and representatives of the Ministry of Investment, the Economic Development Council and Bell Trade. Belize, along with other Commonwealth countries tonight, continue to mourn the death of our head of state, Queen Elizabeth II, who died peacefully at the age of 96 on September 8. Amidst a time of grief, however, on September 10, Belizeans from across the country came together as one to celebrate 224th anniversary of the Battle of St. George's Key considered a national and historic event to recognize the efforts of the Bayman and slaves as ancestors of Belize. 
I want to take a moment to recognize the late Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. As Belizeans, we have known no other sovereign as Queen Elizabeth has always been a constant guiding presence in Belize's journey to become the diverse and forward-looking country we are today. Let us remember and draw strength from her time-honored service to the Commonwealth and its people. On behalf of the Belize City Council and the residents of Belize City, I offer sincere and heartfelt condolences to the royal family during this most difficult time. Today our nation mourns the passing of the head of the Commonwealth and Queen of Belize, Elizabeth II. Queen Elizabeth served with dignity and grace and we acknowledge her long reign and express our deepest condolences to the royal family and the British government and people and indeed the people of the Commonwealth. We wish the new king, Charles II, a successful and productive reign. As traditions call, the official St. George's Key Day ceremonies took place at the House of Culture in Belize City on Saturday morning. With the arrival of special invited guests and dignitaries, including Governor General Froyla Zalam, Prime Minister John Brisenio, Chief Justice Louise Blendman, Opposition Leader Honorable Shine Barrow, among others, the ceremony under this year's theme, Valiant and Bold, Proud and Strong, Belize rebounds at 41. Moved by our new mantra, Valiant and Bold, United and Strong, Belize rebounds at 41. When we examine the pages of our history, there's a common theme throughout. Belize rebounds. Belize rebounds. Belize rebounds. From attempted invasions and economic turmoil to devastating hurricanes and bloody tragedies. Belize rebounds time and time and time again. And what's beautiful is not just the fact that we do so, but the way how we do so, which is always together as one people. When our challenges seem insurmountable, we plant our heels in the ground and we dig as deep as the depths that our national soul allows. When support seems elusive and allies aren't there, we look within and unleash the bravery of our ancestors. When our very way of life is threatened, beat by colonizers, pandemics or global hardships we unite we transform into lion-hearted heroes and we fight like olympians because the belizean story the belizean way of life the belizean people and belize itself are worth digging deep for are worth being brave for and are absolutely and always worth fighting for Minister of Culture Francis Fonseca, who chairs the National Celebrations Commission in his address, paid tribute to Belize's economic rebound under Plan Belize. In 10 days' time, we will be celebrating the 41st anniversary of Belize's independence under the team Valiant and Bold proud and strong, Belize rebounds at 41. Indeed, Belize is on the rebound after the unprecedented socio-economic challenges of the past few years. Our country's economy and finances are steady, stable, and under sound stewardship. New meaningful targeted investments are being made in health housing and education our rural communities are being served and serviced 
like never before. The twin pillars of agriculture and tourism are rebounding faster and better than expected. Land in your hands is the mantra of the Ministry of Natural Resources as they travel the length and breadth of the country. Much has been done in a short time, but much more remains to be done. The work has just begun. There is hope in the land. We are a valiant and bold people. We are a proud and strong people. Together, we will rebound. Happy September celebrations. God bless our beautiful Belize. Minister Fonseca also took the time to call on Belizeans to work together and engage in the very important upcoming decision facing all Belizeans in the ongoing constitutional reform process. On days like today, we must be willing to ask ourselves, who are we as a people? What is our purpose as a nation? When will we truly rid ourselves of the shackles of oppression and colonialism? Where are we headed? And how can we all come together despite any social, economic, political, and cultural divisions to create a Belize where hope and opportunity abound. Prime Minister Briseño has announced the formation of a People's Constitutional Commission, which is charged with undertaking nationwide consultations aimed at reviewing and reforming Belize's constitutional framework. This is a unique opportunity in a nation's history for us as a people to shape and change the governance structures of our country for future generations to come. Today I use this opportunity to challenge all Belizeans to be fully engaged in this very important process. Be informed, be prepared to listen and learn, be open to change, be guided by the national interest and not individual interest. Saturday's official ceremonies also saw the official crowning of Belize's 2022 Queen of the Bay, Maslin Hansen. With this year's 10 celebrations now forming part of history, Belizeans are now preparing for the other activities that will lead to the 21st of September. And while we are out celebrating, the Belize Police Department will put its strategies to work to fight crime. We try as best as we can to plan and strategize with a view to ensure that these events go through without any incidents. The carnival went without any incident. Um, likewise, they have the, the juvet in the morning without any incident. We have, um, on Saturday, we have the tent ceremony and the tent parade. We have the, the tent bram. Um, again, without any incident. Over the weekend, we also had uh, the Martin's Day um, without any incident. So uh, there's a lot that we're doing to make sure that um, we police these events effectively and provide the level of safety to our people. But at the end of the day, I want to emphasize to, to the Belizean people that you all have your role to play as well in your own personal safety. Um, once you go out and behave in an orderly manner, then there's no need to be worried about the police. But if it is that you go out with intent to cause disruption or to disrupt the peace of others, then certainly the police will be there to, to take care of you. And that's the spirit with which we operate um, in this um, time of celebration. We don't want to deprive nobody of the opportunity to celebrate, but if you want to celebrate, then celebrate um, in a way that you do not cause injuries or harm to any other person. And if you are thinking about entertaining at home way into the night, make sure you keep it down because noise pollution will not be tolerated. No one have the right to have a private party 
and uh, in so doing, cause annoyance to the neighbor. Yes, you can have a private function, but your private function must be such that it is not causing annoyance to your neighbor. And so when you are, when you are going to take out your big speakers and put it in your yard and um, blast music and these sort of things to the annoyance of your neighbor, then certainly your right come to an end. Um, the police have been receiving a number of these calls. It's an environmental issue. Um, but as you would know, the police are always the ones who are left holding that um, funny end of the stick, right? And so we are the ones who are called and had to be responding. But in order for us to be able to take legal action, we would have to have the use of what we refer to as a decibel meter to be able to test the level of um, noise that has been pushed by um, these speakers. Uh, because in commercial areas, there's a certain acceptable decibel, and in private residential area, there's a certain level as well. And so only decibel meter can, um, can give us that, um, that testing that we require to be able to take legal action. But despite that, we try as best as we can to speak to the people who are causing the annoyance. And for the most part, they, they, they are compliant. Yes, what we're told at times is that after the police left, they've raised it right back up again, and, and then the calls continue. And so it, it is challenging for us. And so I just want to um, say to people, yes, you want to have your private function, do it in such a way that you're not making too, no, too much noise uh, to the annoyance of your neighbor. Because once that is the case, then it doesn't matter what hour of the day it is, the police can intervene. Because there's some school of thought that believe that, oh, I could make noise if that day, I, I have till 12 midnight, that is not so. It's any hour of the day. Coming up next, 13 major streets to be upgraded in Corozal. Stay tuned. What is Amnesty 2022? An opportunity for undocumented immigrants living in Belize. Belize wants to help you to live freely and continue contributing to those communities you and your family now call home by offering a pathway to permanent residency. Why should you apply? In doing so, you remove barriers and reduce the difficulties faced living as an undocumented immigrant. Applying is easy. Go online to www.immigration.gov.bz for more information. Find out if you qualify, how to apply, what documents you need, and how to book your appointment. Be prepared. The registration period will be from the 2nd of August to the 30th of November, 2022. Belize Amnesty 2022. Let's continue to build Belize together. Walk down the traditional St. George's Key Day celebrations kicked off at the Central Park on Saturday morning with a brief ceremony where Orange Walk Mayor Ladrick Shepard and Deputy Mayor Joesse Cantun both highlighted the boldness of our Belizean people as we work together to overcome the COVID-19 pandemic while also commemorating those who came before us. Today, as we stand proud and strong, on the road to recovery. We honor the Bayman for setting the pace for our country. Our country has endured many challenges in the past two years. We have experienced curfews, total lockdowns, and increase of cost of living. However, just as the Bayman we are pushing forward to ensure that families and by extension our country are rebounding into a healthier and better economic state. The Battle of St. George's Key should serve as a constant reminder to all of us that we are a people with higher determination to rebound from any situation. We stand grounded on a premise of democracy and liberty on a land that is nurtured and blessed with wealth untold. As we continue our September celebrations, let us keep in mind that the Bayman, violent and bold, drove back the invaders from the proud Rio Hondo to the old Star Stone. 
through coral eyes over Blue Lagoon. We will continue watching the angels and stars and moon for freedom and a better future will come tomorrow's noon. Happy St. George's Key Day to one and all. Just like our forefathers and mothers who made the valiant move to stand up and fight off the invaders, our decision as united people to stand and fight the COVID-19 pandemic in the face of all adversity is what has brought us through those most difficult times and has led us to where we are today. We have come out of an era that brought much grief with the loss of loved ones, much despair with the loss of job and sources of income, or much emotional distraught by having to be separated from family and friends and the routine of our daily lives. Yet we emerge from that era reunited with friends and family, united as a people, as a nation, with more compassion and conviction in our hearts, with newer, more creative and innovative ideas that are boldly propelling our economy and country forward at a pace that has never been before. I stand in awe with an overwhelming amount of respect and admiration for the people of Orange Rock whom I humbly serve and from my Belizeans throughout this country for their relentless strength and tenacity to overcome all obstacles. We are Belize and like the Baymen who united for one common cause, let us carry on the legacy, that spirit of oneness and boldness with pride in our hearts, patriotism on our sleeves and progress on our minds and show the world how Belize rebounds at far the one. As for Minister of Health and Wellness and Area Representative for Orange Walk East, Honorable Kevin Bernard, he called on all Belizeans to look beyond any divide, including political affiliation, to come together as one people for the betterment of our dual Belize. Today, as we celebrate the 224th anniversary of the Battle of the St. George's Key Day, we ask ourselves, are we truly united as a people? Are we truly united as a nation? Sometimes the word unity is, not just, is just not to be spoken, but it is to be acted upon. We must be united more than ever today. I want to especially take this opportunity to express to Orange Rock Kenyans, let us together combat the challenges facing our small communities. Let us work hand in hand with our council to ensure that the development and growth of our, own, our lovely Orange Rock can continue to grow and see betterment as day comes and day goes. Let us put aside our political differences, but come together as a people to ensure that we remain valiant and bold, proud and strong Belizeans. The Bayman masters and their slaves stood together in one fight for one purpose. And that purpose was the protection of this land against hostile intentions. What they did that day whether it was a real battle or just an engagement or a myth, whether it lasted two hours or two years or two days or two decades, we stood together and resisted. This may well be the reason we are here today. So as we celebrate the 10th day of September together, let us resolve to being valiant and bold to confront our challenges. Together, let us remain proud and strong as a people to protect and defend our rights regardless of who we support politically. And as we rebound at 41, let us continue to work together to build that Belize that we all want to see. And let us renew our resolve to fight against the things which divide us. 
Also forming part of this year's official ceremonies were members of the Orange Walk Town Council amidst other invited guests. The health of the members of the country's police department is being put to question as three members of the force have died recently due to health complications. The most recent case is that of a San Ignacio police officer who was found dead at his home on the morning of September 8. Police say that Constable Kinsley Duncan was reportedly found dead around 5 a.m. by his common-law wife. She reported that around 9 p.m. on September 7, her, he had complained of pain in the right lower back and took two 400 megs ibuprofen, then went to sleep. When she checked on him the following morning, he was unresponsive, so she called for help. According to Commissioner of Police Chester Williams, the department is looking at receiving assistance from a nutritionist to assist officers in leading a healthier lifestyle. What many people don't understand or appreciate is that as police officers, due to our work hours, we do have bad eating habits. Um, either we don't eat on time or we end up eating unhealthy. And if it is that we are not engaged in working out, doing some physical activity to keep our body at a certain level, then certainly your health can deteriorate and uh, very quickly. I myself, I, I take it upon my, myself to ensure I work out every day. Right? At, at times, yes, it is difficult, but I try, if, I, if not in the evening time, I work out in the morning time because I do recognize that Sometimes I'm here all day, work is so much, I even forget to eat. When I do realize I've not eaten, it's because it's after five in the evening. So it's that difficult at times. And the policemen out on the streets, it's the same thing with them. Um, many of them are working in areas where they don't live. And so they would have to resort to buying food. And many at times the food that you would buy from the street corner or from the Asian business people are not healthy food. You know, so it's it's concerning. Um, we try our best to advise them to, to eat well. And what we intend to do is to see if we can get some nutritionists to um, go to the different police station and speak to the police officers about eating healthy. The Carazal Town Council today announced a major upcoming infrastructure works within that municipality. In the first instance, the town council is looking at 13 major streets which are in need of varying degrees of work. These works are expected to kickstart in the coming days with collaboration from the Ministry of Infrastructure, Development and Housing and Belize Water Services. These works, according to Corozal Town Mayor Rigo Veos, have been long overdue and thus his team has made it a priority to ensure that the infrastructure needs of the town are addressed despite financial and operational limitations. We have a preliminary list, um, a plan, you know, of, of 13 streets. Like I said, a pre preliminary list of 13 streets that we want to, we intend to, to pave. You know, um, this is a council that is very aware about the problems and the infrastructure situation that we have in Corozal Town. Uh, we're not a council that we want to ignore any of those issues now. Um, therefore, we had our discussion and we came up with this preliminary list of 13 streets and we're going about making sure that we deal with the issue with our resources, um, with the town council resources, with the taxes that the Corozalinos pay in making sure that we give the proper maintenance and, and we pave these streets. Um, and for the moment, we're looking at paving manually. Um, you know, we have gotten the technical support from Marine Joa, who are, is a municipality well known for manual paving, you know, and, and they have the experience. So we're getting technical support from them. We already tried uh, two streets uh, um, with our own workers, our own resources, our own machine, um, uh, you know, and, and we did those two streets. So that's a route that we want to go um, here in Corozal. We want to make sure that we hit the issue with the streets uh, through manual paving. And, and we inform the community, we inform the Corozalinos, our Corozalinos, 
uh, about what our intentions are when it comes to the streets and that to show that we're not ignoring it neither. No? Um, so that is the plan that we have uh, right now. With technical assistance from the Orange Walk Town Council, Mayor Veo says his council has tried manual paving on various streets and looks forward to continuing his form of work on major streets within the town. These are priority areas and if you notice, if we go to certain streets, for example, uh, we have Bay Street. Bay Street is in Altamira. Right? We're trying to see how we can solve the major problems in the area within town. Right? Uh, we have a third street south, which is College Road, which is a, a material has already went on it. It's a pending for paving, right? Uh, that is a major, major street. Uh, it's used a lot uh, by commuters. It is used a lot by the high school students. We have a, a new mall there. We have a new bank. So it is a very busy area, right? So that's, that's how we went about making different streets a priority. And like I said, we're, we're going to the different areas of, of the town. And, and I, I, must, I must share, um, Mr. Norma, that, you know, this is a process. It's, it's not something that you do today and you pave tomorrow. You know, it, it takes time. And of course, we're battling uh, Mother Nature because we all know now we can have sunlight right now and in half an hour it starts to rain. You know? So we, we've been battling that, that issue with the weather also. Um, I, by now, we were hoping that we have done more streets, but or at least started doing more. But because of the weather, it keeps us back. Right? And apart from that, we were working very close together with, with BWS. You know, and and I, I can tell you that they're working extremely hard together with us in making sure that they also go in and do their work because they have to change all these pipes, right? all the lines, and, and, and that will benefit the, the community. And that also takes time, you know? So we're working close together with BWS. We inform them, we have shared the list with them. They go in, uh, depending on priority, they go in and, and, and they do their work. Of course, they have to uh, rip the streets. Um, digging has to happen because it's pipes underground and that takes time also, right? So, so we're working together with BWS to make sure that they do their part and then we go in and we, we fix grade and PF. According to Mayor Veos, the council continues to lobby with central government for financial support and assistance for infrastructure works, but also calls on taxpayers to do their part. Surely, uh, I can tell you that all, all the funding is coming from our taxpayers, you know, or our own resources. Yes, we have had certain issues, machinery issues where, and we lean over uh, to a mighty age, which has also been working on us. Um, I am very grateful and thankful to them that on the weekends, they had made sure to come and give us a hand with machinery because our machines are done right now. You know? um, and also, the, 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 whatever, whatever resources we have, we invested, we're trying to invest right back into the streets. Um, I mean, this is this is a team effort. We have WASA, we have Town Council, we have MIDH, and we also have our taxpayers, our Corazalenos who have to do their share. Um, and, and hence the reason why I, I want to encourage them to, to, to be able to come in and pay their tax, no? Um, that's the only way we can be able to, to move forward when it comes to the infrastructure. And, and WASA has a tremendous, they, they have a tremendous task in front of them now. Changing all those asbestos pipes um, is very important for them and for the community, right? Um, these are very extremely old pipes and it's about time for it to be changed. So they're making sure that they coordinate with us, right? Uh, BWS is making sure that they, they, they come and, and, and coordinate with us. And, and that coordination has been very fruitful. Um, we're working together uh, in making sure that we have better streets in Corozal, right? So the resources um, that we have comes from the town council. Of course, um, we will always be um, requesting assistance from the government, right? Um, which once they come in and help, I know that the process will be a bit, a bit faster, right? We will have the resources and the finances that we need to invest within these streets together with whatever revenues we collect at the, at the Corozal Town Council. I know that 
economy is, is, is a bit bad. Business is a bit bad in Corozal Town. But that is the reasons why, that those are one of the reasons why we need to have good infrastructure because we depend a lot on tourism, either local or international. Over the past years, Belize has seen its fair share of narco jet landings. In most cases, by the time cops arrive at landing site, both pilot and the suspected drugs are long gone. But things could change pretty soon, spelling good news for Belize and bad news for the narcos. From September 8 to the 9th, 2022, the 244th meeting of the Central American Corporation of Euro Navigation Services Regional Board of Directors met in San Pedro and Burgess Key. The meeting saw the official approval of a new top-of-the-line $8 million primary reader for Belize under the Ministry of the Blue Economy and Civil Aviation. This primary reader will be an upgrade to the secondary reader that is presently operational. It will have the capacity to improve aviation safety in Belize and provide meteorological data and maritime surveillance. The radar will also be able to detect non-cooperating aircraft and assist in the fight against narco-trafficking in Belize and the region. The CEO mentioned as well that pre previously we've only had a, a secondary radar. And in fact, today we were discussing not only about installing the brand new primary radar that is coming to Belize, but also the discussion as well of um, harmonizing or to being homogeneous then in terms of all the different radars that are across the region with the same company from Europe that's providing this, uh, this that is giving us, um, we're actually purchasing the, the radar. But added to that as well is that making sure that all these radars are homogeneous and when the time comes for upgrades will continue. So it's not about installing a radar that eventually becomes obsolete. It is being at the cutting edge um, technology, using it for upgrades and that is something that was discussed this morning. Very, very important. So um, the installation also of the radar is also a big logistics that we're discussing and um, as well uh, in the previous meeting we discussed that we were able to perhaps put everything together with the primary radar and the secondary radar um, in the same location. We must mention as well that this radar is coming equipped as well that will be able to provide MET services. That is also something I've discussed with the Minister of uh, Environment and Sustainable Development as well, that, that that is a service we can be able to provide. And also not only for air navigation, but as well for vessels out at sea with transponders. and So it is already prepared for that. So it's laying on the table for the long term, for the long haul. So we're extremely proud and excited and proud to be part of this organization that recognizes the need and obviously Belize is already um, making a difference. We're working by the end of the year. Hopefully by the end of the year, we'll be able to install, start the, the installation of this, okay. this um, radar. Sir, I have to ask specifically about the capabilities. Um, like I said, if maybe I might uh, misunderstand, but the secondary radar we've had has not been uh, equipped or, or it does not give us the capability to track those uncooperative aircraft uh, operators who they're non-cooperating that, that turn off their transponders. Does this primary radar solve that problem for law enforcement issues? Absolutely it does and that, that is exactly what we're doing it for and um, tying it up with all the different readers in the region as well. That's, that's important. So then that sends a message out there that the entire Central America is properly um, providing um, the, the surveillance that is needed. Um, certainly it will. So we won't have to depend solely on intelligence, we would be able to track real time? Absolutely. For the Belize Police Department, a new reader translates one more armor to fight the drug war. Well, if it reaches, reaches a stage where it stops landing, it's better for us. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we would want. And so if the ministry announcement of the radar would serve as a deterrent to the cartels, then I'm happy for that. Um, nonetheless, if it is that the drug plane drug planes continue to come, then we still have to ensure that we are prepared to deal with them as they come. And that's what we'll do. The Ministry of Health and Wellness has gotten a hold of 11,520 doses of Pfizer COVID-19 vaccines. The vaccines arrived at the Philip Golson International Airport yesterday as a donation from the government of Netherlands through the COVAX facility and is shipped through the PAHO revolving fund. 
Ministry officials, including Dr. Natalia Beer, technical advisor, maternal and child health, was present for the arrival. Persons 12 years and older will be able to access the vaccines at any of the vaccination sites as early as today or tomorrow, Tuesday. And that's the news. We invite you to join us for another newscast on Tuesday, September 13th here on CTV3 and Fiesta FM 106.7. Remember that to read a text version of the news, you can visit our website at ctv3belizenews.com. You can also log on to our Facebook page for current stories at facebook.com slash ctv3belizenews or our YouTube channel at ctv3newsbz. Remember to wash your hands and remain safe. From all of us here at CTV3 News, thank you for watching and listening. Good night.